This is KGW News at 5. We know that the variants are here. We don't have great visibility on them yet. Hello, friends, and welcome to KGW News at 5 o'clock. And first here at 5, another COVID variant detected in Oregon. This one emerged in Brazil. And now Douglas County is reporting the first case on the West Coast. Oregon officials say it's all the more reason to keep your guard up while you wait for your vaccine. That said, we have some good news tonight on that front. President Biden announced drug makers will have enough vaccines for every adult in the U.S. by the end of May. That's two months earlier than previously thought. Here's Maggie Vespa. We're now on track to have enough vaccine supply for every adult in America by the end of May. A big change to the nation's vaccine timeline announced Tuesday afternoon by President Biden. Oregon was already expecting 34,000 doses of the newly approved Johnson & Johnson vaccine this week. Now it's unclear how many more doses the state will get and when. I think we'll be getting those details this week. That said, officials are begging people, don't let your guard down yet. Nationally, after months of decline, new cases and hospitalizations went up by about 2% last week. The director of the CDC warning America could be in for a fourth wave. Here locally, Oregon officials have another reason to worry. We know that the variants are here. We don't have great visibility on them yet. The state announced Tuesday another COVID variant has arrived in Oregon. Douglas County is reporting a case of the variant first detected in Brazil, known as P1. It's the first case reported on the West Coast. Researchers say like other variants, it's more contagious. It may also be more deadly. And according to The New York Times, scientists have tracked cases of this variant infecting people who have already had COVID and recovered. That said, it does seem like current vaccines are effective in keeping that variant from making you really sick or worse. So officials say it's all the more reason to keep vigilant until you get vaccinated. There's a sense of you know, if we let down our guard too much or too soon, we risk another spike in the virus. And that's a that's a double lose situation because not only are people uh, sick and hospitals potentially overloaded, um, that also is going to divert a lot of uh, staff and attention from vaccinating. Maggie Vespa, KGW News. More now on that announcement from President Biden. Today he announced Johnson & Johnson is getting some help manufacturing its newly authorized single shot vaccine. The company had been falling behind, but will now be teaming up with one of its usual competitors, pharmaceutical giant Merck, to ramp up production. This is the country's third vaccine in the fight against COVID-19. The FDA authorized it for emergency use over the weekend. Roughly 4 million doses were shipped out Monday. Ramping up production is one thing, getting the shots into people's arms quite another. Here's a look at where things stand right now. The seven states you see in green have vaccinated more than 18% of their residents. The majority of states are in blue, including Oregon and Washington. That means they have vaccinated between 14 and 18% of residents. The five you see in gray, Utah, Texas, Tennessee, Alabama, and Georgia have vaccinated less than 14% of their residents. And here is a closer look at vaccine distribution here in Oregon. This graph is broken down by age group. Seniors 70 and up have now become the largest percentage of people in the state who've gotten at least one shot at 31%. Just a week ago, people between 30 and 49 years old made up the largest percentage. In Washington, new changes were just announced for vaccine eligibility. Governor Jay Inslee says educators and licensed child care workers are being added to phase 1B and they're now eligible for the vaccine immediately. That's in response to President Biden's goal to get all K through 12 teachers and staff vaccinated by the end of the month. Governor Inslee says the phase finder online tool may take time to reflect those changes, but says educators and child care workers can start scheduling their appointments with providers immediately. Clark County will have a new place to get the COVID vaccine, but don't call them. They'll call you if you're on the public health waiting list. The clinic will be at the same place already set up for coronavirus testing, and that's the Tower Mall in central Vancouver. There are 2,400 doses to start from a federal allocation to pharmacies. The clinic starts Friday and runs for four days. If you're on the waiting list, you may get a call to book a first dose appointment. 
some of them have been on that waiting list for a long time. So we're really excited about getting, you know, finally getting them uh, opportunity to be vaccinated. Dr. Melnick says the Tower Mall location is accessible by public transit. And along with those on the wait list, those in underserved communities will also be getting appointments. This week, Clark County got triple the number of first doses than it had been getting from the state to put it more in line with its population. Students in many school districts across Oregon and Washington have already started limited in-person instruction or hybrid. But there are other districts that aren't there yet. Christine Pitawanich spoke with one mom who's frustrated her children haven't had the opportunity to attend any in-person school. My name is Leah and I am a mother to six children. Of those kids, Leah Hadley says two of them are school age. I've got Marissa that is 12 and then Malachi that is almost 10. Um, they attend Cherry Park at David Douglas School District. Hadley is a single working mom and her son Malachi has special needs all of which make distance learning difficult. It's been very, very challenging. Um, my fourth grade son is actually on an IEP and he's been diagnosed with an intellectual disability. She says sometimes he has behavioral issues and refuses to participate in school unless someone is by his side. My mom is retired, so she's coming over to my home two days a week on Mondays and Tuesdays and doing distance learning with my children. The other part of the week, Hadley is staying home using her sick time. And on Fridays, dad takes over. Her 12-year-old daughter, Marissa, is also having a tough time, struggling with depression due to isolation. She drew this picture to communicate to her mom how she's feeling. She drew me a picture of a girl and her mouth was all covered up, like she didn't have a voice. Hadley says she's frustrated the David Douglas School District hasn't offered parents the option of limited in-person instruction or LIPI for kids who need extra help, something other districts have had for months. To not even have LIPI be started right now or not even fine-tuned is just very disappointing as a parent. A spokesperson for the district says schools are still developing plans for limited in-person instruction with the goal of starting on April 5th. But hybrid may not be in the cards. A school board member confirmed that the board voted to stay in distance learning for the remainder of the year. This when other larger districts like Portland Public Schools has said it plans to start hybrid learning in April. It's just, just very disappointing that we are that the district is so behind in this. A school board member says they're keeping a close eye on metrics in the event that conditions change. Another school board meeting is scheduled for this Thursday, and a district spokesperson says there may be more clarity on plans after that. Christine Pitawanich, KGW News. Because we aren't an official school, we're a ragtag collection of people who are sticking with a out of work school teacher um, who is teaching what his passion is. Last June, David Richards was laid off and his welding class was cut from the Estacada school district's budget. The former teacher knew how important learning a skilled trade was, so he started his own private classes. Richards started the classes in November and he's had about a dozen students take lessons. Most are working towards getting their certification, which will open up job opportunities once they pass the test. Classes cost $25 a piece and run for about a month at a time. He says he's not doing this for the money. This isn't a revenue producing day job for me at this point yet. This is after hours like you see after I've spent a full day working. Um, this keeps me in the game of teaching, which is something I really believe in. And since this isn't associated with a school, people of all ages are welcome to join.